What's up, everybody? I'm the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and this video today is going to be a little bit of a shorter one. I've got a couple of really involved scripts in the works, and I want to spend as much time as possible researching and writing them to make them the best that they can be. Today, I want to cover one of the most unique aspects of Goju Ryu training compared to other styles of karate or even other martial arts that I've ever seen. Goju Ryu is known for our circularity, both in terms of our uke waza and in terms of our footwork. And no performance of sanchin kata would be complete without those nice little round steps that we like to do between each sanchin dachi. I'd go so far as to say that this type of circular footwork is one of the defining differences between goju ryu and any other style. And it's so important that manuals by Higa Onomorio and Toguchi Seikichi senseis mention it in one form or another. Uechi ryu, which practices an open hand version of sanchin, uses this kind of stepping in that kata, but unlike them, us goju ryu karateka step that way in almost every kata that we practice. So, why is that? Are there any real benefits to this circular manner of stepping? And if so, why has it caught on in Goju Ryu, but not in any other style of karate? I'm going to try and explain that now, and let you know why it's a useful way of practicing, as well as when you can probably leave it behind. Let's step into it. I've got to explain what circle stepping, or rather, sanchin stepping, is before I can begin to talk about why we actually use it. So let's pull up a helpful little demonstration. I refuse to show my feet on camera for internet reasons, so here's some footage I found from YouTube channel Deja Thoris, uh, link in the description, demonstrating the basic stepping pattern. You'll notice that this is a type of ayumiashi, or walking step, as well as a type of suriashi, or sliding step. That means that the lead foot alternates, like how you would normally walk, and that the weight is lifted off of the heel, but that the ball of the foot is allowed to slide on the floor. As you step in this manner, your stepping foot draws out a semicircle so that the balls of the feet are almost touching at the halfway point. While your foot shouldn't turn too much during the step, many schools teach to pull the heels slightly in at the end of the step, to grab the ground with your feet, and to correct any pigeon toeing that might have happened in your stance. This is a fairly simple way of stepping that can be done either to the front or to the back, and that can be adopted to a number of different stances and stepping patterns. While it can't really be adapted to shifting steps where your rear leg and front leg never trade places, overall it's a fairly versatile way of stepping that can be adapted to almost any karate situation. However, it's also pretty slow, takes a lot of focus, and can feel very unnatural. Why is it then that we practice it in Sanchin, the most important goju ryu kata, and every other kata besides? There are a couple of different explanations given by various karateka as to why this style of stepping is useful. Toguchi Seikichi Sensei describes it as primarily a training methodology, not an actual means of stepping in combat. He says, It is indeed a strange stance and way of walking. No one would stand or walk this way in normal life. And if we did so in an actual fight, we would surely and instantly be knocked to the ground. The benefit of this way of stepping, he claims, is that it reinforces the proper alignment of the feet and knees, counteracting the habit that many people have of bowing their legs outward slightly when stationary. This kind of stable, close-in posture is incredibly useful for close-range fighting and clinch work. But since keeping the knees in is a habit that has to be developed, this type of circular stepping, which has the tendency to drag the toes slightly inwards, is used to correct and build familiarity with that kind of stance. In addition to the benefit of habitualizing that posture, the slow method of circular stepping requires you to shift your weight over your stationary foot and engage your hips while stepping and performing techniques, rather than isolating your upper and lower body. Another explanation that I've seen for circular stepping is that it's intended to position one's foot behind one's opponent's leg in preparation for a throw like osotogari. This connection between Goju's circular techniques and its throws and grapples is commonly cited as one of the key characteristics of the ju side of Goju. Rather than moving straight in, this type of stepping is intended to help you move in at an angle, and either get your leg or your hip behind your opponent in preparation for a throw or a takedown. This interpretation also makes sense in terms of several of Goju Ryu's kata which contain shifting or straight stepping, since it would mean that some of these techniques are intended for takedowns, whereas others are not. And the final explanation that I'm going to present here is that this type of stepping is more stable while in motion than several other types of stepping. Unlike picking up your foot, this method of stepping allows you to have two feet on the ground at all times, so that if your stationary leg is swept, you can quickly transfer your weight to your stepping foot in order to not lose balance. And unlike simply sliding your foot straight forward, you move your weight to your stationary foot while you're completing the step, meaning that you can practice it either at a slow or at a fast speed. However, since this type of stepping isn't intended for actual combat, at least according to Toguchi-sensei and a few others, 
This is the least compelling explanation in my personal opinion. This one's easy. In kumite or in a real fight. Circular stepping may be a useful training tool, but it's slow, awkward, and most of the time it requires you to square up your shoulders, which both leaves you a bigger target to get hit on, and robs you of most of the ability to use your rear hand for power punching. That type of squaring up is very useful at closer ranges, which is why we practice it at all, but most kumite is fought well outside of clinch range, and WKF kumite doesn't even allow for clinching. But even in a close range fight, you'll find that while that posture is very useful, circling your feet when you step isn't. It's much more likely to get your shin kicked or your leg swept. In general, the sharp and formal moves of kata will look a lot rougher in an actual fight or sparring scenario. You shouldn't force your technique to look perfect in a fight at the expense of being effective, and that means that you should focus more on where you place your feet as opposed to how exactly you had to move to get there. Other types of foot movement, like shifting, twisting, or even lifting your feet as you step, might be more appropriate for a given situation. But even though circular stepping shouldn't be used in a real fight, it's an important exercise to help build good habits, and one of the things that makes Gojuryu truly unique. Just don't rely on it too much. Thanks for watching this short one. If you liked it, there are some more in-depth videos on the way, but for the time being, I'd appreciate it greatly if you liked this video and left a funky little comment letting me know what unique part of Gojuryu is your favorite, or if you're not a Goju practitioner, what is unique about your style that you like. If you're still listening to this outro, then I bet that you want to know how to see those more in-depth videos that I mentioned. Well, guess what? You can subscribe to this channel and even turn on notifications for it. You know the drill. I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and go practice your Sanchin Kata right now.